some of America's best baseball players came up through the Negro Leagues. While fans filled the stadiums, players were segregated and not recognized by the big leagues. Until now. Yeah, in a long overdue decision, Major League Baseball has finally stopped denying the contribution of black players. In our continuing series, Create Equal, Justin Walter shows us how the league is trying to set the record straight. Baseball's sacred record books are finally being revised to include the long-denied recognition of Negro League players. Players segregated in a league of their own now getting some respect, but it's taken a hundred years to make that change. And the realization of Major League Baseball's not validation, but acknowledgement and reckoning of righting a wrong is what really makes this such a watershed milestone moment in, in my purview. The Negro Leagues, once the only place black baseball players could survive and prosper, is earning Major League status. Records and stats of more than 3,400 players from 1920 through 1948 will now be a part of baseball's official history. We know that there are gaps in the pages of American history books. There are so many who have contributed to the greatness of this country, and their stories have never been properly told. Well, the Negro Leagues is one of those great stories. There aren't many people alive that understand and appreciate the Negro Leagues more than Larry Lester. He co-founded the museum in Kansas City 30 years ago. It also cries some tears of sadness in that uh, players like Larry Doby and Minnie Minoso, Monty Irvin, and, and Joe Black or didn't live long enough to see this uh, incredible achievement. Baseball's dark chapter is now a thing of the past. Unfortunately, only a handful of Negro leaguers are alive to rejoice the decision. I'm hoping that apart from the five who survived, that the families of 3,400 and more will take some measure of pride in being able to open a book or go to a website and see their ancestor's name mixed in with white major leaguers who were his contemporaries, but against whom he never got the chance to play. There was never a question of legitimacy for the Negro Leagues. The league sold out major league ballparks during the 1920s and 30s, and greats like Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio played against black ball players in exhibition games. Outside the ballpark, Negro Leaguers were reminded of their harsh reality. You ride into a town, fill the ballpark up, and yet you can't get a meal from the same fans who had just cheered you, or you can't get a place to stay. So you would have to sleep on the bus and eat your peanut butter and crackers. Their love of the game kept them going. From Hall of Famers Jackie Robinson and Willie Mays to legends Josh Gibson and Satchel Paige, the Negro Leagues produced some of the game's greatest. They inspired me in so many ways. Uh, there were times I, I thought about quitting and I talked to one ball player by the name of Woody Smallwood and he said, hey, dude, you can't fight unless you're in the ring. I'm like, oh man, so I didn't quit. So I'm still punching. <laughs> and I will continue to uh, promote the legacy of black baseball. Baseball's reclassification is a huge step in the right direction in making the diamond an even playing field. But there's still more work to be done when it comes to acknowledging the extent racism played in the game. We will never get a complete record of the Negro Leagues. Uh, and that's also part of the story. The reason why we don't have a complete record now or we, we have what we have is because of segregation and racism and black baseball not being covered on a daily basis uh, by the press. We should always be reminded of those, as the late great Buck O'Neill said, who built the bridge. And the players in the Negro League built this bridge so that others could cross over. And ultimately, Justin, that's what led us to this watershed moment on Wednesday. Justin Walters joins us in studio now. And Justin, you know, once the, uh, the stats are officially added to the record books, what's the next challenge going to be? Corey, that next goal is getting more Negro, ne more Negro leaguers into the Hall of Fame. Leading that initiative will be Larry Lester, who told me once the records are merged, he would like to compare white Hall of Famer stats 
with Negro Leaguers. A few players that easily can make an argument for are going to be Cannonball Redding, as well as Rap Dixon, who played in the first game ever with black teams at Yankee Stadium. There are currently 35 Negro Leaguers in Cooperstown. Back to you guys. Wow. Justin, thank you so much for that excellent report.